In this video, I'm going to discuss about sliding continent theory on mountain building. This was put forward by Daly. He postulated this theory in 1926. He wrote a book called A Mobile Earth in which he explained about the origin and evolution of different relief features on the surface of the earth. He attempted to explain the origin of folded mountains and their distributional pattern and orientation etc. And the orogenetic force involved in his theory is gravitational force. So according to this theory, he has many self-proved facts which the first one is primitive crust which is a solid crust formed just after the origin of the earth. So the outer crust, which, so this is the crust, the crust formed just after the formation of the earth. This origin after the earth origination, so here the equatorial dome, so this is the ancient rigid mass at the equator. So around the equator, whichever landmass is there, rigid landmass that is called as equatorial domes, whereas if it is in the rigid landmasses, it's in the polar regions, both the pole, both the polar regions in north and south pole. So these regions were called polar domes. Primeval Pacific Ocean. So between these two domes and these two domes, there is a region which separates these domes. This this region is called Primeval Pacific Ocean. And this is a depressed region. This is also called as mid latitude furrow. So depressed regions, which is a oceanic region called geosynclines, formed from primitive crust. And the crust composed of granitic rocks, what he says, and substratum is composed of glassy basalts. Whereas he says that we know that the crust has less dense rocks and the substratum has a high, little more density than denser rocks. We know that basalt, basaltic rocks are so low density rocks than the granitic rocks because the granitic rocks we know that they are intrusive rocks. Intrusive rocks, basaltic rocks are extrusive rocks, and it has uh, basaltic rocks has a uh, just fine granules, and this has a well distinguished granules because of the cooling. But granitic rocks it takes a uh, cooling time takes longer. Whereas it, for these basaltic rocks, uh, it cooling time takes uh, very less, so that just a uh, few granules formation and the main small granules formation is there, but here it has distinguished uh, granule formation. But here he says just opposite to that, that he says that crust is composed of high density rocks, whereas substrate is composed of low density rocks. And water bodies occupied half of the globe and land masses projected above the water bodies. That's how he explained his theory. And here we have the picture so here the granite the upper crust is of granitic and the lower crust is of basaltic rocks here the depressed region is called a geosyncline so this geosyncline oceanic crust this this region got support is there the river is carrying sediments it's depositing here until the sedimentary load is increasing because of that this crustal region is breaking down so because of the breaking down of this region here there is no support for this region so this region is compressing this side and this region is compressing this side because of the compressive forces here this region is rising folding this folding causes mountain building so that's how he explains his theory collapse of primitive crust led to formation of mid latitude furrows as geosynclines as the interior of the earth was contracting and sediments from the domes transported by the rivers were deposited in the geosynclines Sedimentary overload led to subsidence. This continuous subsidence caused lateral pressure on the continental masses. Gravitational force, pressure and weight of the load caused further subsidence of adjacent clients. Because of that, so the height and size of the continental domes increase. The continental dome size is increasing. Increasing the sediments of the dome started to expand. So here the sedimentation is there. They started to expand, increasing the height and the size and began to lose weight. So because of the expansion, because of the expansion, they are losing their weight. To compensate the weight loss, there began underground flowage of denser material from below the geosyncline beds to continental zones. So here, the the to compensate the weight loss, the, it is moving underground flowage of material is there from oceanic bed to continental bed. This process continued and the size of the domes increased. So here the dome's size is further increasing, increased. And uh, it caused pressure on the oceanic bed. So because of that, here the pressure is there. And later this got ruptured due to tensional forces. Because then this region is, is rupturing. So now that it has no support. The support for the continent lost. So here. 
so here we can see that this this region got ruptured it's coming down so here the support for this both the region is lost so they are compressing like this to cause mountain building and this led to squeezing and folding of the geosynclines canes and formation of folded mountain west to east the extension of mountain ranges formed due to sliding of polar and equatorial domes towards the these geosynclines so equatorial geosyncline is there polar geosyncline is there so west to east mountain ranges so sliding polar sliding of polar and equatorial domes towards the these geosyncline so here equatorial dome is there this is sliding like this this is sliding like this because of that here this stethis geosyncline climb was formed and here the mountain building star hill mountain building occurred for example himalayas and north south extension mountain ranges were formed due to sliding of continental masses towards the pacific geosyncline mm -hmm. so here continental masses moving towards the pacific geosyncline so continental masses moving this is the pacific geosyncline just moving like this so here the polar mass is not moving so that's how north south extension of mountain ranges formed that's that's how we explain this theory and evaluation of this theory this theory has many self proved self proved facts self proved facts major parts of this theory is based on self proved facts but it has many limitations like outer crust is denser than substratum which is against the evidences of seismology so we know that crust is low den uh, density of the crust is less than the substratum and self proved facts it, as i said this this theory has many self proved facts and it has many hypothetical facts also and generally geosynclines are long shallow and narrow water bodies another theory is what we read but whereas in this concept he says that it, these geo, geosynclines are formed and mid and this region is called mid latitudinal furrow so this oceanic uh, depth depth of the ocean is more very high and this sedimentation can happen here not in the mid latitudinal furrows so this and and if we accept this theory and there won't be any sedimentation and orogenesis so here the sedimentation can here the sediment sedimentation overload can't cause or the sedimentation overload can't cause mountain building process if accept if we accept this theory as if the sedimentation takes place in mid latitudinal furrows and this theory has uh, regarding mountains and oceans no case is given regarding the depth and length of the oceans and amount of sediments so here he says that mountain mountain buildings or for mountain building process uh, is formed in this mid latitudinal furrows so there is no possibility of occurring mid lat mountain building in mid latitudinal furrows as well as this ocean is broad and here this furrows are very deep so it 